Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from MyTestedESP.net. In my current video series, as you may already know, we are talking about Entity Framework performance. In my previous videos, I mentioned the famous M plus one problem, the lazy loading and how to not overuse it, how to use select properly to get only the data you need how to use to list to array and all other data loading methods and how to optimize the delete statement. In this video, I'm going to talk about cold and warm queries in entity framework and eventually how we can optimize them a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to show is I'm going to run the same query twice and measure the performance with the normal stopwatch. I understand the stopwatch is not the best method to measure the performance, but it will give us enough information to understand what is going on. Okay, the query is this one. We are getting the uh, we are getting cats from the uh, database where it has a little bit of filter conditions. I intentionally made them a little bit more harder and difficult for the SQL Server. And I have a select statement, which also gets a little bit of data generated with a single join. Okay, so if I run these queries, I will see that the first query runs five times and more slower than the second one. And both queries are exactly the same. What is happening here is that Entity Framework needs to analyze the model, needs to check the database, needs to apply migrations if there exists. And then when the model is analyzed, Entity Framework needs to check uh, and validate the query. Then it needs to extract all the data from the query. Then it needs to translate that query to a SQL, uh, to the SQL Server's native queries and some other operations I'm not going to explain because you get the point. Entity Framework needs to execute a little bit of tasks before the query is run. And the first time Entity Framework builds all this, uh, gets all this information from your code and then it caches it. So the second query is always run from the cache and that's why it's quite faster, five times faster and more. So the issue here is that every time you run a query for the first time, the first query at all in your application, it will be slower. And if that query is uh, a bit more difficult than this one, it may take even 20 to 30 seconds. If your DB context is bigger than mine and in every normal situation it will be bigger, uh, it will get even slower. So essentially, the bigger the model you have, so the bigger the DB context class is, and the harder the query is, the slower your first query in your application will be. And in most situations that may not be a problem, but if you hit the problem I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, solutions you can try but always measure to make sure that you fixed the correct thing but first I'm going to thank my sponsors as you know I'm developing open source projects for ASP.NET and I'm doing that in my free time so recently I started a Patreon and an open collective account so that people could help me with my projects and with this channel. So if you like the projects or if you like my knowledge I'm sharing with you, 
I will be extremely thankful if you decide to donate or decide to become a backer or a sponsor. The current sponsors are Softuni, Smart IT, and Noble Hire. You guys rock. Thank you for supporting me and thank you for allowing me to continue doing what I love. If your company is seeking for a little bit of more exposure, you may message me or you may show it on my content and I will be happy if it joins. Okay, so how to solve these issues? Apparently, you, mm, you don't have a lot of choice here. Most of the time, NT Framework needs to build the model and needs to cache the query. But what you can do is first use a tool called NGEN. You can improve the startup performance of Entity Framework apps by NGENing the assemblies. The problem here is that uh, with just-in-time compilation, which is used by default by the .NET Framework, you have a little bit of overhead for uh, the dotnet runtime to analyze and get the information from the entity framework core assemblies so if you want to improve that performance you can use ngen just uh, make a quick google search for ngen entity framework and you will see how to do it and if you pre-compile the entity framework tools you will improve the startup performance a little bit. The second approach you can do is to split your DB context. If the DB context is getting huge, you can split it to multiple DB contexts. That's, uh, uh, that's the way to make the models smaller because if you execute the first query against this context, it will uh, entity framework will analyze only the DB sets contained here. So if you have a huge DB context, each first query will be run uh, against a lot of models and a lot of DB sets. So you can optimize that by splitting the DB context into multiple different DB contexts. If a general rule to follow is if you have more than 10 db sets in a db context you should split it so that's the second option and the second way to optimize the first query and the third option is to uh, call it on application start so if you have a slow query which is even slower the first time you uh, it is hit it's a good idea to warm up entity framework by calling the query before uh, on application start so that all the requests afterwards are will be fast this uh, uh, these queries are referred to cold and warm queries the cold query is the one that essentially optimizes the models reads the data and so on and it's called code because it, it has never run before and it's a little bit slower then the second query is warm and that means it's already pre-cached and entity framework will run it fast enough so the first time we're running a code query and the second time we're running a warm query so to improve the cold query performance these three tips uh, can be used using ngen then splitting the db context and the third one is to uh, call all your slow queries in your application during application startup so that they will be warm when the user requests hit I will show you additional uh, 
additional concepts how to improve entity framework performance with code queries and with with difficult queries like this one or even queries that have uh, a lot of joints but i will show these techniques in my future videos so stay tuned for now this should be more than enough i hope you guys understood what's the difference between cold and warm queries and if you did hit the thumbs up button or leave a comment below and additionally if you like my content i will be extremely thankful if you decide to join my patreon or uh, introduce your company to my sponsorship deals thank you guys again and 